Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Subscribe and select alerts for updates to my daily aviation content. This is part 21 of the history of the gyroplane. In this film, we look at an aircraft that very many got excited about back when it was introduced in 2011. The Aerocopter had quite an attractive aggressive style, similar to the newly launched Autogyro Calidus, and both shared that military fighter jet look mainly due to the one-piece canopy. However, the Aerocopter's styling was even more fighter aircraft looking because the undercarriage bow for the main wheels was also styled as short wings. It was designed by FD Composites in Austria and was powered by the commonly used Rotax 914, the four-cylinder turbocharged motor with 115 horsepower. Maximum takeoff weight in various countries of Europe is 560 kilos and the empty weight of 342 meant that for a lot of people the weight to fly within limits was going to be a deal breaker because 218 kilos when you want to go on a reasonable trip and it requires maybe 50 or 60 kilos of fuel means the two occupants can only weigh about 80 kilos each which is doable but they're not exactly on the large side. I went to Austria to test fly the factory aircraft and to look around the facility in 2014. By this time there had been an aerocopter in the UK with the intent of putting it through BCAR T process and the usual story was there wasn't the resource either at the CAA or at the person that bought the aircraft into the UK to get it through that process. But I wasn't getting a lot of clarity so I thought I'd go to the factory and see for myself what the situation was. I remember my lasting impression of that visit was that, well, that was a waste of time. The factory had a reasonable number of full-time staff, but the office staffing seemed totally at odds to the workshop and its facilities, because whereas the office had quite a smart boardroom, usual desk, computers and resource, with people looking busy, the workshop was pretty much empty aside from one aircraft inside, a few racks with some parts there but they seemed fairly randomly stacked and no workshop staff and not really any equipment. The contrast really was that stark. There certainly wasn't a lot of workshop activity. But the one thing that struck me about the aircraft was that physically it's quite large compared to anything that Autogyro or Magni make. It makes for a very nice cockpit and ground handling is good because of the relatively wide track undercarriage. It's much wider than a Calidus. Flying wise, the aircraft is reasonably unremarkable in regular flight. One thing I did notice was that it had quite a lot of stick shake and I thought that was just badly balanced rotors. But at around 80 miles an hour, for example, aside from the interior, you could be in any factory built gyroplane. Take off and landing, for example, are normal in every sense. However, it was a very fast aircraft. We saw 200 kilometers indicated airspeed very easily, but I have to say at this speed, the aircraft had quite a notable Dutch roll, which is a yaw roll motion that wasn't all that strong, but when you look forward, it seems as if the nose was scribing an oval. It wasn't an uncomfortable movement, but it did create an impression that yes, the aircraft was fast, but it just wasn't entirely happy being there. And I wouldn't want to be flying in the upper range of its performance often. It just didn't create a great feeling. The aircraft's canopy also created quite a lot of internal reflections, but by this point, I'd gone cold on the aircraft and returned home. I later heard that in 2014, they had a factory fire, then had some financial issues, and then worse, the CAA required some design changes to the aircraft to make it BCAR-T compliant. I asked my contact there who told me the CAA requires a better longitudinal static stability and with the current design we will not be able to achieve that. The solution is quite simple in theory in the form that we need to shift the rotor hinge point. This nonetheless is an unexpected R&D project which will take some time on our side. I will keep you in the loop about progress I've heard nothing since 2016. 